The Detroit Lions are in need of a pass rusher. But first, welcome back to Syndicate. After dark. Where we do videos at all time of the day, afternoon, evening, morning, and early morning as well. If you're saying this before 6 a.m., it is qualified as a syndicate after dark, way after dark, that is. I didn't want to wait until tomorrow morning. I like to get ahead of the news cycle. And what we're going to talk about now is the Detroit Lions potentially trading for second-round pick Aziz Ojolari, who just had a game against the Pittsburgh Steelers on Monday Night Football to conclude Week 8. Now, this has been a name that's been coming up along the trade rumor meal for quite some time. And the Giants losing today have dropped to two and six, and they're pretty much done. They always they already have Kayvon Thibodeau. They have Brian Burns, who they traded for in the offseason and just gave a bunch of money to. Eventually, they'll have to pick up Kayvon Thibodeau's fifth-year option and also decide whether or not they're going to have to extend him this season. And there might not be any room for the second-round pick, Ojolari. And the Detroit Lions... As Dan Campbell alluded to on the presser in on Monday morning, the 27th of, uh, of October, that the Detroit Lions could be in the market for making a trade to help bolster that defensive line playing some games with the press there. But how could Ojolari help? Now, before you guys are in the comment section typing away, yes, he could play the Sam linebacker role, but that's not how the Detroit Lions will use him. Okay, we use our linebackers to blitz. Now, I would prefer a defensive end, a guy who puts his hand in the dirt, not necessarily a stand-up rusher, but at this point, I don't care who it is. And who you are, as long as you can get to the quarterback. Um, you think I'm joking? Go get Bruce Irvin. Go get him. See what he's doing. See if you can get him off the farm and see if he's still working out and put him on the Detroit Lions. I'm being dead serious. But if he's not an option, then maybe uh, Aziz could be. Now, let's take a look at his stats. This has not. Let me see if it's updated since just a few minutes ago, because when I looked before, it is not. ESPN takes quite a while. A second round pick drafted 50th overall in 2021 by the New York Giants. So if you're following, he is on the last year of his rookie contract. He actually has six sacks on the season, getting two. It's weird because it's updated. If you go to the game log, it's updated here. He got two sacks in a loss against the Pittsburgh Steelers. He had one last week in a loss against the Minnesota, I'm sorry, the Philadelphia Eagles, then had two in a loss against the Cincinnati Bengals, won a couple games, and then had one in his third game of the season. Now, he had he has had injury issues. We'll go to his stats for his entire career. Last year had injury issues. The year before that had injury issues. Only his rookie season, he's played a full season. But he is also, in seven games, he got five and a half sacks. A down, kind of a down year, and already has six in seven games this. So that's eight games now. So that's six in eight games now that this is not updated. But as you can see, if you go to the game log, like I said before, it's updated with the sack list, but not with the total sacks up here. So that should say six. Again, no fifth-year option. Now let's look at his contract because this is interesting. A second-round pick. If we trade it for him right now, he would cost, let me see, in 2024, his base salary was $1.5 million. His cap hit was 2.1, and his dead cap was a half a million dollars. Now, I don't know about you, but this is Brad Holmes M. His, uh, what do you call it? This is what he does. This is what he, I have a name. It's something that I'm thinking of. Put it in the comment section. You know what it is, but this is what he does. If we trade it for Ojolari, we would owe him less than a million dollars for the rest of the season. We probably would give up, I'm thinking, the same amount we gave that Josh Uche went for, maybe a six-round pick, maybe a conditional pick or something like that. Maybe the Giants would want you to put a maybe a sweetener on it. But not only would he be a loner, he would be a cheap loner, and the Detroit Lions could decide if they want to re-sign him at the end of the year. I am a firm believer that James Houston will not be back as a Detroit Lion next year. So you're talking about this is perfect for you break 
the bank, sell the farm people. I wouldn't be mad if we did this. But and you're talking about the, the biggest as the biggest asset would be draft capital. What would we have to give up for them? But this gives you the money to extend Aiden Hutchinson very comfortably. Decide what you're going to do with Jamison Williams as far as his fifth year option and maybe an extension if they choose to do so. And having a guy who can get to the quarterback. Don't forget, Derek Barnes is not in a contract for next year either. Not sure the Detroit Lions will stick to him. I think they will because I think what they would do if we re if we did trade for Ojolari and we signed re-signed him next year, we also brought back Derek Barnes next year. I think that Ojolari rushes the passer. And is he the book end to Hutch, I don't think he is. I still think you need that traditional in the dirt defensive end. Maybe we can pick one up in free agency. Maybe we get one in the draft. Or maybe we trade for him. We let him walk in the offseason. Let me ask you this. If we trade it for Donovan Peoples Jones and we didn't, we didn't do anything. We re-signed him. If we were to trade for Ojolari and it was just a loner, how would you feel about that? If we gave up the same thing that we gave up for DPJ or the same thing that Josh Uche went for earlier this afternoon. I wouldn't be mad at this at all. Giants are, they're not going to fire Brian. They, I don't know if they move on from Daniel Jones, but they definitely are kind of hitting a reset button. And at two and six, you're not going anywhere. The NFC East is probably going to be locked up by the Washington commanders and only one team from the playoffs will make it. So the Giants are currently probably nowhere near the playoffs. I would be surprised. No, we looked the other day and I, I'm not sure if they were the worst team in the NFC. Let me see. Let's pull off. Let's pull up the playoff picture again and see what we're talking about here. The Detroit Lions obviously are the number one seed. Where are the New York Giants? They are, not that it matters, but yes, they are second to last in the NFC, it, NFC and they are two and six. So you can see right here, this updated, but the graphic on ESPN did not. So I could truly see them getting rid of Aziz to kind of get some capital for next year. They got to decide what they're going to do with Daniel. I don't know if they can get out of that contract or if they are just going to roll with him one year. I have no idea. They've got a foundation that they could probably build, but they need a quarterback. They're going to need a quarterback. So I wouldn't be mad if this happened. This is a two-for-one deal. If we were to trade for Ojolari, we still would need someone else. We still would need someone else. Maybe we get that long-term solution to pair with Aiden. Maybe it is a Trey Hendrickson. There's a lot of opportunity. And the way Dan Campbell was looking today, there could be definitely something brewing. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Would not be mad if the Lions did this. Cheap move, low capital, not breaking the bank, not selling the farm. And I'm sure you guys could get behind that. So let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Remember, this channel is brought to you by viewers, subscribers, and members just like you. You guys could be anywhere else on YouTube, but you choose to rock with me. You guys are awesome. Take care of yourself and each other. And as always, go Lions.